In medical terms, an algorithm is a series of commands or a protocol. You start with one step, then take another one based on patient's condition and prognosis. They provide clear guidelines for diagnosing and treating patients, ensuring consistency, and improving outcomes. In this video, we are looking at five different algorithms, absolutely crucial, and you wouldn't want to miss any one of them. First up, we have Basic Life Support, or BLS, and Advanced Cardiac Life Support, known as ACLS. When a patient is unresponsive and not breathing normally, you start with chest compressions right away. You do 30 compressions followed by two rescue breaths. Keep going until help arrives or the patient starts showing signs of life. Also, use an automated external defibrillator, or AED. It analyzes the heart rhythm and can deliver a shock if necessary. Now, let's move on to ACLS. This algorithm provides detailed steps for managing cardiac arrest, bradycardia, tachycardia, and post-cardiac arrest care. For cardiac arrest, the steps include high-quality CPR, defibrillation if the rhythm is shockable, administering medications like epinephrine and amiodarone, and managing the airway. For bradycardia and tachycardia, ACLS guides you in using medications, pacing, or cardioversion based on the patient's condition. To learn more about it, we have got a video for you. Next, let's talk about sepsis management. The sepsis six bundle is a straightforward approach for managing sepsis early on. Within one hour, you need to give oxygen to maintain oxygen saturation above 94%. Then take blood cultures to identify the infection. Now start intravenous antibiotics. Also provide IV fluids to maintain blood pressure. Next, measure lactate levels to gauge the severity and monitor urine output to check kidney function. There's also the quick SOFA or QSOFA score. This helps you quickly identify patients at risk of sepsis by looking at their respiratory rate, mental status, and blood pressure. A score of two or more indicates a higher risk. Click on the video in the corner above to learn it fully. Moving on to acute coronary syndrome or ACS. When a patient has chest pain suggestive of a heart attack, follow the ACS algorithm. First, get an ECG to classify the type of ACS. For non-STEMI, treat with medications like aspirin, nitroglycerin, and anticoagulants, and plan for coronary angiography within 24 to 48 hours. For STEMI, aim for immediate reperfusion therapy. This could be through thrombolysis if the patient presents within 12 hours and PCI isn't available, or go for primary PCI if it is available at your facility. Here's a brief overview of ACS algorithm. Next, let's discuss stroke algorithm. The fast assessment, face, arms, speech, time, is a quick way to recognize a stroke. If you notice facial drooping, arm weakness, or speech difficulties, call for emergency help immediately. Then, follow the acute ischemic stroke management protocol. Get a CT scan to determine if it's an ischemic or hemorrhagic stroke. For ischemic strokes, administer TPA if the patient is eligible and presents within three to four and a half hours of symptom onset. If TPA isn't suitable, consider endovascular therapy. Transfer the patient to a stroke unit for specialized care. Finally, let's cover acute respiratory distress and airway management. This is probably the most important of them all since it's spine of medical emergency. Rapid sequence intubation, or RSI, is a structured approach for intubating critically ill patients. It involves pre-oxygenating to provide an oxygen reserve, then administering sedative and paralytic agents to facilitate intubation, and quickly and skillfully inserting the endotracheal tube to secure the airway. For severe asthma attacks, follow the acute asthma exacerbation algorithm. Administer high-dose inhaled bronchodilators like albuterol. Give systemic corticosteroids to reduce inflammation and provide oxygen therapy. If necessary, use non-invasive ventilation or mechanical ventilation to support breathing. To learn the rapid sequence intubation procedure, please watch the video right here. As a resident medical officer or physician assistant, being well-versed in these protocols will enable you to respond confidently and competently.
Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Stay safe and take care.